Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Rotator Cup Effort Expert. My name is Dr. Daniel Orcutt and what we do here is we try to learn more about the rotator cuff, what's wrong with it, how to fix it, how to get things better and feeling better and moving better. Uh, my biggest concern, my biggest aim here is to educate uh, patients uh, to better understand what's going on, also to better bring questions to your physician about how and when and what to expect and therefore you're best educated so we have a best recovery. So today we're gonna to talk about rotator cuff repair that has failed. Um, so unfortunately, if, we, if you do enough rotator cuff repairs, ultimately in the end, you'll have one that fails. And today we're gonna to talk about failure and then more importantly today, we're gonna to talk about what do we do when it fails? What are our options? Uh, so last time uh, we talked about um, why it might fail and today we're gonna to talk about what can we do if it does fail. The situation would be, you know, you have a rotator cuff repair and things are seem to be going okay. It's hard to tell early on because it hurts. It hurts and it's stiff and it hurts and it's stiff. And then slowly over time, we hope to see it slowly get better, better and better. Uh, uh, if it doesn't, it seems like it's not getting any better. The pain's not any better. The motion's not any better. The strength's not any better. Then we start thinking about, okay, well, maybe this means that the rotator cuff hasn't healed. Now, again, it might heal for a variety of reasons. Um, if it doesn't seem like it's healing, you're going the way that we'd expect it to go, we go and change and get another MRI, a repeat MRI. Now repeat MRIs are tricky because repeat MRIs um, aren't as easy as the MRI before the surgery. Everything is um, pristine, meaning that no one's been there. And so it's easier to read an MRI before surgery. It's a little bit more difficult to read an MRI after surgery. That's why we wait for three months or four months down the road from rotator cuff repair before we would want to get an MRI. Because before then, we don't really know what's going on. There's a lot of fluid, a lot of edema, a lot of uh, uh, inflammatory process going on in the rotator cuff and in the shoulder. And therefore an MRI is not very helpful early on. It can be very helpful later on, uh, but sometimes there's some questions about whether this is truly re-tear or is it a partial re-tear. But oftentimes when you get to three and four months down the road, uh, if there's any questions, then we probably go ahead and plan on going back in there. Now, so what do you do? You get an MRI, MRI shows a re-tear. You go, oh no. Oh no! The patient goes, oh no, the surgeon goes, oh no, because it's a big problem, uh, but unfortunately it's a known problem. Um, so we say, okay, well, what are our next steps? So there's really four major next steps. I guess five, say do nothing, right? If you say, you know what, it hurts, but I'm not doing anything, I don't care, then we probably shouldn't even get the MRI anyway. But so do nothing, more therapy, keep on doing the same thing, M maybe, but probably not a really good option if we know we have a re-tear. So two, the second option is refix it, right? So that's obvious, duh, go in there and refix it. Well, when we refix it, we probably need to do a few different things, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the first two things. We're gonna say, okay, we're gonna repair it. We're gonna re-repair it. What do we do differently the, the second time to help prevent the first thing happening again? Two, we can repair it with a graft, and we'll talk about grafts choices. There are a few different graft choices. We'll talk about graft choices, what we should or shouldn't use, and what our options are. So those are the first two we're gonna talk about today. Uh, beyond that, we'll do another episode, so it'll be a third episode in this series, uh, about, well, what do you do uh, if the first two you don't want to do? So the other two are to do a super scapular reconstruction. Big word, do something, use a graft to kind of hold the ball and socket in place. And lastly, a reverse total shoulder. It's a total shoulder that rely, doesn't rely on the rotator cuff to, to work, right? So the shoulder can work despite the rotator cuff not working. We'll talk about why that's good or bad uh, in another episode. So today we're going to talk about, well, we could re-repair it. And if we re-repair it, what do we do differently? And then um, we can re-repair it with graft. Uh, and that would be something different. So depending on this exact circumstance, this is where it's important to talk with your doctor, your surgeon, to try and figure out what makes the most sense for you. So if we re-repair it, there's a few things that we can confirm, make sure we've done. And so probably we've done this the first time around, uh, but you don't never know. And if you have a, um, an inexperienced surgeon or someone who doesn't do a lot of shoulder rotator cuff repairs, maybe they didn't do it, but most surgeons, most times, people are gonna do surgery, gonna do rotator cuff repair surgery, would do this, which is prepare the bone. So if we look at the bone, this is the bone we're talking about right here. That is the greater tuberosity. The greater tuberosity is actually where the rotator cuff attaches to, where it's supposed to attach to before surgery. 
and where it's supposed to attach to, you know, before you have a rotator cuff tear. So we have to prepare that bone. And so most of the time what we do is clean it off, get all the scar tissue on it, debride it, meaning use a, a rasp or um, a, a burr or uh, sometimes some sort of thing to take all the scar tissue off and take a little bit of bone off to create a bleeding bed of bone. That bleeding bed of bone will help increase the chances of, of, re, of that re-tear healing. So that's one thing. Secondly, we look at here, this is the this is the acromion, and this is a little bit hard to see or hard to understand, but there's a bone up here. And what we can do is prepare the bone, do the same thing, kind of clean the lat bone off a little bit, let that bleed a little bit, a little bit more uh, humors, so to speak, so healing factors to help it to heal. Now that's somewhat debatable, but most of us who do rotator cuff repairs will do something to the rotator cuff and do something to the greater tuberosity as well as do something to the subacromion or do the to the acromion to create a, a better environment for healing. So that's one thing. So we create that better environment. Okay. So that's great. But we probably did that already the first time around. But if we didn't, we make sure we do it and make sure we do it well. So the other thing is, okay, do we do, do we put in more suture anchors? So the anchors, right? And we put the anchors into the bone and those anchors have the sutures that come out to repair the rotator cuff back down. So that's, that's the rotator cuff. So maybe we need more sutures or mo more suture anchors. So each suture anchor can have one, two, three anchor, uh, su three sutures, maybe more, usually two or three. And so maybe we need more anchors. Maybe we didn't put enough anchors on the first time around. So maybe we need more anchors. Or lastly, maybe we need um, more sutures in those anchors. So that'd be one thing we'd, we might change the second time around. Or also we might use uh, anchors in different constructs. So if we have a really big rotator cuff tear, oftentimes we talk about doing a double row. The double row means that we do two rows of anchors. So we may do a row of anchors here and a row of anchors here. And if you can imagine, the rotator cuff is gonna come down and attach here. Right? And so we have a row of anchors here that we're gonna have sutures here. And then we have another row of anchor here that we're gonna suture here. So that helps give us more surface area, a better repair, theoretically. Um, so that sometimes we may do a double row. Maybe we didn't do it the first time or we might do it the second time. So that's really kind of the different thought process of what we might do uh, if we do a repair. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna do a slower recovery. Which means we're gonna not push you we're gonna, we're gonna weigh more heavily on the rest and protection and less on the motion. Obviously that does concern us because if we have less motion and more stiffness, then that's not such a great thing in the long run. However, when you do a re repeat repair, uh, we may slow you down, not do therapies quickly, not do range of motion as quickly to help us protect that repair because we know it's tedious if it's, been, if it's already been retorn once. So that's, that's the one thing we're gonna talk about today. The second thing is grafts, right? So you can reinforce the repair with a graft. The graft can be of uh, allograft or autograft. Allograft means from somebody else or from something else, and autograft means from yourself. And so sometimes when we do a rotator cuff repair, we might have some, we might do a biceps procedure too. And then we might have a little bit of biceps left that we can use that piece of biceps to reinforce the repair as well. So the biceps is an option for an autograft. There's not really many other autograft options, in my opinion. Yes, you can get it from different places in the body. Typically we don't go to the knee or, or the ankle or whatever to get a graft. Uh, usually if we're gonna do that, then we'll use an allograft, something that comes from somewhere else. So there's two basic kind of allografts. One, you get it from, you know, you use a tendon from someone else who, who died and they donated the tissue. We clean that tissue, test the tissue. It's very safe, but not perfect. So it's maybe there's, there's our risks, there are risks of having donated tissue. So talk to your doctor about that. If the risks and benefits outweigh them for you or not. But there, there's some graphs you say, okay, well, we're gonna use um, a, a graft of Achilles from someone else. So we, the Achilles is right, nice and big, so we can use it's plenty of uh, tendon to help us repair the tendon of the rotator cuff or reinforce it. Uh, and then lastly, um, we do one thing more uniquely in the shoulder, although it's used in different parts of the body as well, it's called, uh, it's called a graft jacket. Uh, it's, or we would call it in this situation, acellular dermal matrix. So it's part of mating of the dermis of the skin and you take the cells out and then you use that. And again, that's very um, common use uh, in rotator cuff as well as other, other parts of the body. So it's a little different than taking a, a tendon from someone else because it's not really a tendon, it's an ace cellular dermal um, graft. So it's a little bit different, uh, but it comes in a nice big sheet that we can use and it's plenty big enough for a rotator cuff repair. So what we do 
is we would, on top of this, we would reattach the graft, or we, we would attach the graft here and then over. And so we would, re, we would incorporate that into our repair, our double row repair, almost always if you use graft. We would also use the graft, put the graft and tie it down to the healthy rotator cuff tissue. So essentially we make it, make it thicker. So if you can imagine, if your shoulder rotator cuff is this thin and we reinforce it with something that goes on top of it, then we're gonna thicken that rotator cuff, give it more stability, give it more chance to heal in a more normal way. So that's the plan. So again, the, the, the options are repair it, repair it in a slightly different way, making sure you're very uh, um, detail oriented on preparing the bone, preparing the rotator cuff to be fixed. We also didn't talk about back here, depending on how much tension is on the rotator cuff, we may have to do a few things to kind of loosen up the tension on the rotator cuff so that we can repair it. We can talk about that another time if somebody's interested, but there are ways of kind of taking some of the tension off the rotator cuff so it's not so tight, so it doesn't take, so it takes more effort to, to peel, push that off or pull that off the rotator cuff repair. Um, and then when we do the repairs, again, technically do it more efficiently, maybe use double row, and then also maybe use tendon or some sort of graft to reinforce it, and then go slow, go slow, go slow. So the repair of a retorn rotator cuff is more tedious for the surgeon. Unfortunately, that means more tedious for the patient. However, the, there is success. Uh, so I encourage those who've had a retear and are having a lot of pain to be encouraged there. There is success in repairing them again. Uh, it's a little bit longer, but there are lots of people out there who's had a retear that have been fixed and actually are doing well. Maybe not normal, uh, but I'm not sure we expect normal even after a primary or first time rotator cuff repair. Maybe not normal, but do well. So don't, don't be too disheartened. Although I know that's hard to say, uh, but your surgeon wants the best for you. The surgeon will do the best for you. And sometimes that means send you to someone else who has more experience. But either way, don't give up on a retorn re rotator cuff. Find out what the options are and go from there. Again, next time we're going to talk about the, neck, the, the other two, the suprascapular reconstruction and for the, the last one, a reverse total shoulder replacement. So we'll talk about that theirs uh, in, in a later episode. Uh, the next episode, in fact. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to, men to, to write those below. And also please follow us on the Rotator Cup Expert. Thanks very much and have a great day.